Divine Grace Christian Fellowship. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 God is good. All of the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. 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 I tell you what, y'all, I am excited about this month. You know why I'm so excited about this month? Well, one of the reasons I'm excited for this month is that this month I celebrate number 11 with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We've been happily married for the last 11 years. Amen. 11 years. Matter of fact, next week we'll mark the, the 11th year anniversary mm -hmm. of the joining of Donald uh, and Marie Bethany and Robert Lee Proctor. Amen. 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 Peace, peace, peace. <laughs> Jesus. And these two were, were two become one. Amen. That's right. That's our high sign. So if you see us right. read that, that's what that means. Peace. That's our sign language. You know, that's what you call me. Maybe I love you. Every I, day. I love you, you know. And also, this year marks year number four for yep. Divine Grace right. Christian Amen. Fellowship. Amen. Wow. Strong mm -hmm. and growing larger day Amen. by day. Amen. And so I thank God that He has, has joined me with like a group of here. people uh, four years ago that, are, that have uh, come to be an intimate mm -hmm. part of the ministry. And I want to want to give y'all a round of applause. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. I don't know where I would be. I probably still be preaching by myself. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, preaching to my teddy bears, you, you know. Yeah, but I, I thank God for you, and I, I believe that uh, as we go forth, you know, this year we, you know, we may make have just a little bit of celebration or something mm -hmm. to acknowledge the moment. But I think uh, throughout this month, God has given me a word that uh, is preparing us for for greater. Yes, yes. 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 He's, he's making room for us through yes. through this preaching and teaching this particular uh, sermon topic that I've been on for the last couple of weeks having to do with uh, attaining Christ or rather uh, the successful life of a Christian. Amen. Mm -hmm. Last week we talked about uh, as much as you know, if, if, if by all means we are able to attain Christ. That's what we talked about last week. But this week I think we can go a little bit higher with that. Amen. Amen. And the, the sermon title is How to Obtain the Significant Prize. How to Obtain the Significant Prize. And the subtitle to go along with that is The Goal of Releasing to Reach High. Mm. That's what I believe that, that uh, God is doing in, in our lives and, and leading each and every one of us Two in the in the way that he he does things is that he wants to take us to the next level. Look at this, I want to go to the next level. I want to go to the next level. So if you want to go to the next level, then you got to be willing to to do certain things. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got to be willing to do certain things. That's right. And like I said last week, you said if by any means I might attain Christ. That's mm -hmm. right. If you're going to go to the next level, you got to attain Christ. If you don't attain Christ, you ain't going nowhere. Matter of fact, you are going somewhere. You're going somewhere, nowhere fast. You, you know. But for those that, and, and, I, and I, as I looked at that, the Holy Spirit reminded me to remind you that this is a sermon, in particular this series, for those that haven't attained Christ yet. To make them aware of the fact that we're living in a time and a season where it's an imperative is coming that you must attain Christ. Because if not, you're going to get caught up. Mm -hmm. And it's also for those that are in Christ that they have to attain Christ. It's something that you have to remember about the fact that what you, what you went through to get Christ, that if you stop doing it now, you may slip and fall and hurt yourself. Amen. Amen. And so so it's, it's, it's a mindset that everybody must maintain, the attainment of Christ. And now we want to be able to go higher. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I'll preach the sermon before you can get to the introduction. But just to let you know that there is more 
that's that's expected of us. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing that some years ago in, in my in my meditation moments of meditation. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I heard I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, says Robert, there's more expected. Mm -hmm. And so as I begin to, to ruminate on that and reflect on that, I begin to come up with certain things, but even then there's still more expected. So we're gonna be operating out of Philippians chapter three. And we're gonna be picking up at verse 10, working through to verse 16. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 to 16. Amen? That's our foundation of scripture. We'll start there. So if you go ahead and stand with me, we'll open up with prayer, set the service in order, and then we'll proceed. Amen. Topic of Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for these yes. your people who have gathered here today as you have an expectation of us to do each and every Sabbath day, Lord God. To to gather ourselves with, uh, with fellow believers, Lord God, to hear words that is purposed for each individual that is here and for the body as a whole, Lord God. So, Lord, as I go forth today, Father, I ask that you will minimize me in the minds of the people that are here today so that they will not look upon me and judge what I have to say, but listen to the word and let the word judge them, Lord God, so that they can do this introspection and, and find the things to find the connections that you would have them to, to make. But in doing that, Lord God, I ask for your help because this is such a heavy matter yes. that I can't do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. So I thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding my thoughts, guiding my words, and guiding the ways that I preach yes. this sermon out today because it's very important that we receive this. Yes. Bless the hearers of the word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Go ahead and open up the Bibles if you haven't done so to mm -hmm. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. 16. When you have it, say amen. I got it. Amen. 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 That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that. Which I, which also I am apprehended of, Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth into the things which are before, I press for the mark, for the high prize, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same things. Amen. Amen. You may have a seat. Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor, I want to reach the goal. I want to reach the goal. Yeah, I want to reach the goal. And the goal is releasing to, re to reach high. That's the goal I want to Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I believe yes. that's where the significant prize is. Yes. And I want to I want to reach that far. How many of y'all want to reach that? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you know, as I was reading this this scripture earlier today, I was I was looking at the Berean Bible uh, app and, and I, I saw a, a very interesting translation of what I just read. And I just want to read that for you right quick. And it says there, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to him in his death. Mm -hmm. So I may somehow attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained all of this or have already been perfected, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have laid hold of. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have laid hold of. This is Paul saying that. Mm -hmm. I have yet to, to lay hold of Paul. So mm -hmm. Paul figured he ain't laid hold of it yet. Right. You know, we, we need a little help. You, you know what I'm saying. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize of God's heavenly calling in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should embrace this point of view. And if you think differently about some issue, God will reveal this to you as well. 
nevertheless, we must live up to what we have already attained. Mm -hmm. Already attained. And we know from, from speaking uh, about this last week, when we talked about it, if by any means we may attain Christ, that is that we attain to the resurrection of the dead. We got to a point where we understand that. You got to get to that point first, where you got you not obtain, but obtain. Amen. That means you, you arrive to a certain point in life and you looked at this situation, you said, you know something? I need to make a change. That's right. And that change started by you now accepting Christ Jesus. And, understand, and then through some processes, you learn to understand what that resurrection is all about. Get a little ahead of myself, but I just want to use that as part of my introduction because what we have to do is we have to set our sight on a goal. Anybody ever set a goal before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm talking to the right head. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't want to, you want to, you want to make sure I was in the right church. And, and as I was thinking about that, I remember back in the day that uh, I ran this 10K race. The first time I ever ran a 10K race. The first time I ever ran 10 miles, I didn't know I ran 10 miles. My mother. I got tricked into it. I was running with somebody else. He ran out five miles. He said, okay, we got to run back. I'm like, wait a minute. He ran five miles. Now we got to run five miles in. That's 10 miles. What car at? You, you know, I need to, you know. <laughs> there wasn't no car. We had to run back to the car. You know. And after that, I started me running these 10, 10K races. And one of the most challenging 10K races I ever ran was the Cooper River Bridge Run. Now, the Cooper River Bridge is in South Carolina, uh, Charleston, South Carolina, as a matter of fact. And that race, from the start to the base of the, the, the bridge, it was like a mile and a half run. Just to get to the base of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And then from the base of the bridge, on the other side, from the base of the bridge, to get to the finish line was 1.7 miles. In between there, the bridge itself was 2.7 miles to get from one end of the bridge to the other. Now, what made that so challenging is that the first one and a half miles of that bridge was like this, straight up, straight up. And so you can imagine how your glutes is at the maximum speed. <laughs> 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 Running up that thing. I've never run anything like that before, so I, I did, could not get my mind wrapped around the fact that I'm running like this here. And it had these uh, indicators on the top of the bridge, you know, a red X and a green arrow to let you know what lane you can ride in because you couldn't see the traffic on the other side. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and so I could barely see the top of that thing. And there was 30,000 people running up this, across this bridge. And so that bridge was rocking, boy. And so, you know, so if you wanted to, I, I didn't feel safe being on the edge. I didn't want to get, you know, bounced off. I'd run in the middle of the bridge. But there were so many people that, after they ran that first mile and a half, and when they started up that bridge, they didn't realize how tall it was as far as the grade. And you see people laying off to the side, you know, watching the back. <laughs> I, you know, and I, I was feeling their pain, but I had a goal. When I, fought, when I hit that bridge, I had, a, I had a goal to get to, to the, the, the 10K, which is 6.2 miles. But when I hit that bridge, I changed my goal. All I wanted to do was get off the bridge, you, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't want to jump off, so I just, you know, just said, okay, the goal is to put one foot in front of the other and keep my head down. <laughs> Eventually I get across that thing. But, you know, after I, I got across it and I went back home and I thought about what I did, I began to train with the goal in mind of running the bridge again the next year. Mm -hmm. And so I ran it, I think, a total of three times before I left South Carolina. But the thing was, it did make the distance any shorter. It, it was still the same length. But I was able, after a while, to get across that bridge with a little bit more stamina, you, you know, mm -hmm. a, a, a whole lot more than before. And so when we think about things such as this, I, I realize that in the endeavor of anything, I don't care what it is, going from, what, going from where you are to where you want to be, the best way to ensure the arrival there is you've got to have a goal. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a goal. Yes got to have a goal. Because having a goal may not make the journey easier or shorter, but if you don't have a goal, or if you don't have any thoughts of a goal, or if you don't have sense to make a goal, it makes it tougher to get there. Right. It makes it a lot more challenging to get there. It, it makes it a, a, a little bit harder to get there. 
Why? Because you don't know when it's going to end. You don't know where the goal is. You don't have nothing in, my, in, in, in your mind to say, no matter what I face along the way, I'm going to take it because I've got to get to my goal. But if I don't have a goal, to tell you the truth, wherever I end up at is good enough. Mm -hmm. I, if, if, I, if, I don't, if I fail along the way and stop where I fail because I didn't have a goal, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. That's good enough. I know everyone raised their hand when they uh, said they established the goal, but have you ever started out on something without a goal in mind? Mm -hmm. yes. And got to your first, met your first challenge, maybe it was the second challenge, maybe even the third challenge, and said, this ain't even work. It stops right there. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been there before? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of runs, that's what I'm like, Shh, man, it ain't even worth it. That's, <laughs> this is far enough, you know, 10 feet, I'm going back to the house. It's too cold out here. I had this, when, when I was in recruiting, I had this acrostic that I used to follow that would help me reach my recruiting goal. And uh, it was uh, goal. It was goal. Guts was an opportunity to achieve the next level of success. I, I, I would keep that, that acrostic in front of me. I got to have the guts to, with an opportunity. I can have the guts. I can be all in them, but if I ain't got an opportunity, I will never make it to that next level. So a lot of times I had to create the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because I had the guts to do that. Right. But if I didn't have the guts to do it, then I won't meet my goal. So I, I, I set that in my mind because I believe, even from my readings and what have you, that as a human being, we've been wired to achieve, achieve goals. Mm -hmm. Do you know that your mind is a goal-seeking mechanism? <laughs> that whatever you set your mind to do as a goal, whether it's good or bad, you will achieve it as long as you keep it fixed yeah. in your mind. Yeah. Because what's going to happen is that your, your brain is going to start bringing things into view that you never really looked at before. And if that is part of that goal, whether you outline it or not, I was thinking this this morning, when you do goals, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter how defined it is, as long as it's a goal. Mm -hmm. But the more defined that goal is, the more clearer the destination, the clearer that this outcome is going to be. But you can just say, I want to go to church. And from there, things are going to start Said, I want to go to church. I think I'm gonna call uh, Elder Loretta. I think I'm gonna, uh, you know, get get dressed now. You know, you can define it all the way out, and you follow those steps for that goal. And so our mind is, is designed to do that, and we rely on our goals really to help us navigate our way through life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the purpose of, of goals. I, I think that's why those self-help places may you know are making millions and billions of dollars on goal setting. Mm -hmm. Because every because that's that's innate in us. That's almost like like uh, uh, beauty fashion things. Everybody want to look good. You, you know, some people need a little help more help than others. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> I know I do. And so, as far as that, if we, if one is to ever achieve their goals, I wrote down if one fails to even achieve their goal or have a design to it. What they're going to miss is an objective that activates their ambition. If I don't have a goal, if I don't even have just the smallest detail of a goal, then I won't have the anything to activate my ambition to go after that goal. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I'll just sit around and won't do nothing. Because right? I don't have anything that will cause me to get, get started. Mm -hmm. If I don't have the smallest design of a goal, then I don't have an end state to energize my efforts for. Because if I don't have a goal, I got the energy, but I'm just wasting it all over the place. Mm -hmm. If I don't have a goal, then really I don't have anything to fix my focus upon. Mm -hmm. And so anything looks like a goal then. I, I think that's why that's, that's why we end up working at jobs that really don't do anything for me. I, I, I started working at this job because I didn't have nothing else to do. And so I'm focusing all my attention. I'm working sun up to sun down, but I'm miserable. And every time someone says, why don't you go try doing this? I never thought of that. But once you put in the goal, all of a sudden things begin to change. Like I said, with, without a goal, any destination along the, along the way, even failure, is a goal. So when we look at the paradox of the goal, we have to ultimately have a willingness to lose in order to gain. 
In order to reach a goal, you have to have the willingness to lose mm -hmm. in order to gain. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, a lot of times when you have a goal, sometimes we just consider the complexity or the, or the constraints or, or, or the capacity of us reaching that goal. And so we end up focusing on the wrong thing. And so what we have to do is lose our focus on that thing and begin to focus on the commitment that it's going to take to get there. In other words, you have to be willing to commit to losing the taste of Twinkies to reach that weight goal. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I got I got because I'm considering this. I, I love my, my Twinkies and I, I like the taste, but I got to get rid of that taste out of my mouth in order to reach my, my goal. I don't want to put cookies in there, but that applies too. <laughs> you got to be willing to lose the watching TV time mm -hmm. if you want to reach an education goal. Right. Right. Because when you start focusing your, your, your attention on, on TV or you, you, you start paying attention to what's on, on the TV and not what's in the book, you'll miss it. Mm -hmm. Three hours later, you're like, what, what was I reading? <laughs> then they've done that. Mm -hmm. you got to commit to losing the, the desire to overspend to reach the budget. Right. I'm just giving you some, some That's right. examples right. of right. Right. practical right. things yeah. that you have to understand about so, this goal. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what we heard from Paul last week when we learned about what Paul had to give up in order to gain the knowledge of Christ. Mm -hmm. Just just for your edification, go back to, to, to uh, Philippians chapter 3. And it was telling us there in verse 2, it said, Beware of dogs and beware of evil workers and beware of the concision. Because we know those false teachers, they're, they're going to try to get us off track. And he goes on, he says uh, in, in verse 3, For we are the circumcision which worship God and in the spirit uh, in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh if any other man thinks that he has uh, has where where uh, where he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, the Hebrew of Hebrews as touching the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, touching the law, blameless. So he says, all those things in verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. And so the, the, the teachings of that, that he may have gotten that were false teachings from, from the, the people that he says to be aware of and, and the false trust that he placed in his own self and his own background, his own teaching, his own upbringing. He's, he says, I, I count all that as lost so that I can gain Christ. I had to give up those things in order to gain the thing that I want. Because those things had my mind focused on another type of goal. Yet doubtlessly I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, from whom I have suffered loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. So he said, all these things here that kept me away from the goal of, of the knowledge of Christ is worthless to me. It's dumb. You know what dumb is. <laughs> he said, it ain't even worth it. They can't even do anything for me. And so that's what we have to look at as far as giving up certain things in order to achieve the goals that we want to achieve. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Yes, yes. So you can write this down in your notes and just hold on to it till later on, but if you were to lose something to gain something better, what would it be? If you were to lose something to gain something better, what would it be? Don't, don't let nobody see it, just keep it to yourself. But I think that's an important question to consider, wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. Because whatever we have gained, if by any means, we need to lose it to obtain that. I, I want to challenge your, your, your understanding of what you've obtained or what you've gained through the various goals that you had in your past that may have not fully included Christ. And just think about it for a moment, that whatever we have gained, if by any means, we need to lose it to obtain that. You have to lose it to obtain that. I, I, I feel the pushback like that. Oh, I, don't <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what that entails. 
well, the Holy Spirit is going to help you all out with this. Mm -hmm. He says over there in, in Philippians 3, 7, he says, But whatever were gained to me, I now consider lost for the sake of Christ. So whatever you gain thus far, and you look at how it has a play in you reaching your particular goal, which is Christ, those things you need to lose. Mm -hmm. Is what Paul is saying here. The Paul's goal is, is, is if by any means he might attain to the resurrection of the dead. And why does Paul want to attain to that level? Mm -hmm. He says so, well, he lays it out in, in, in verse 10 and 11. He said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his, to his death. If by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. So in other words, to get to that, to get to Christ, Get to what Christ has, has, has attained for us, which is resurrection. Because Christ is the resurrection and the life. What I have to do now is I gotta know him. That marinade. Amen. Do you know Christ? Do you know Jesus? Have you have you sat back and just meditated and thought, who is Jesus? Amen. Who is this Christ? Who is this person that would give up his life for my life? Maybe it, when was the last time you thought about it? Mm -hmm. If you hadn't made it a goal, it's probably been a long time. Mm -hmm. I made it a goal just the other night. I said, I'm like, I don't think I really have thought in depth about Jesus. Just to be honest with you. But to sit back and really think about who he is so that I may know him. As much as I know my wife, as much as I know myself, as much as I know y'all. A lot of times we know him like we know the person that lives on 323 Elm Street in uh, Olympia, South Carolina. I don't know that person. But I know somebody probably is living at that address. And that's what we think about Jesus. When it comes to knowing Jesus, we don't know him that because he, he seems so far away from us. But he's right here. Mm -hmm. He's right here. So I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know the power of his resurrection. I want to know the power that it took to raise him up, which is the same power to raise me up. I want to know about that power. Mm -hmm. You've got to make it a goal to know that. You've got to make it a goal to, to know about this fellowship that we have in Christ Jesus. See, it just doesn't come to you if you don't have a goal. Because when it shows up in front of you, because it's not in your focus, if it's not in your view, it's not part of what your, your thought process is as a goal is, it'll pass you by and you'll never know about it. Mm -hmm. The, the fellowship of his son, which is to be persecuted for the sake of Christ. I like how the, how the Holman uh, Christian Standard Bible lays it out. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his son be conformed to him in his death. So in other words, I want to know him just like, I want to know Jesus like Paul says in, in Galatians 2.20. I want to know him, the fact that I was crucified with him. That's right. I want to know that I died with him on the cross and, and the life that I, I now live, I don't live in the flesh, but I live it by faith mm -hmm. in him that died for me. That's the kind of knowing that I want to have so that I may somehow attain to the resurrection of the dead. So that as I go through that, I can come alive again mm -hmm. as a different man or a different woman. I wrote down there to look myself the, the framework of attainment, meaning that if any means I might attain Christ, and this 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 attainment is an action or a fact of achieving a goal to which toward a goal toward which one has worked. The framework of attainment is an action that you took to achieve a goal that you worked toward. And so, in other words, in order for me to know Jesus, I got to work for him. In order for me to understand what this power means, I gotta work toward it. In order for me to understand this fellowship I have in Him, I gotta work toward that. I gotta do something that brings me closer to that. Just like when I was running that that 10K, I could have stood at the finish line and said, "All right, I'm there. I got no rather I could stand stood at the finish line and said, okay, I ran the race.' Or I could have started at the the start line and said, sooner or later, I'm gonna run the race." But until I actually run the race, I was never in the race. Right. 
So I can't expect to win anything because I didn't do anything toward a goal, mm -hmm. to obtain that goal. Mm -hmm. But if I started at the beginning line, at the start line, and because it was a straight line run, I got to run to that thing. I've got to. I got to work toward it. I got to do things that lead me toward it. What are you talking about, Pastor? To, to, I, it means to take actions to know Him. Because by knowing Christ absolutely, without any qualifications, restrictions, or limitations, I'm able to know Christ in a wide variety of different applications. Mm -hmm. I, don't just know, I just don't know Christ on Sundays when I, by chance, come to church. I don't know Christ just by chance of flipping open the Bible and landing on, on I am not sent to them uh, unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Hmm, I don't know what that means. <laughs> you know, just, just flipping open the Bible. Uh, there's a, some study that has to be involved in. There has to be some effort that's placed toward that so that when I get to know Christ, I know Him in a wide variety of different things. So I'm not putting a qualification on Jesus. I don't think Jesus can do this. I don't think Jesus can say this. I'm not putting any limitations on this. I don't think Jesus loved me, so I don't think he's going to be able to help. I don't put any restrictions on Jesus. Jesus is, you know, I'm, I'm just a little person. I haven't been in the church very long, so Jesus wouldn't notice me. That's a lot of people do that. They, they don't want to work toward getting to know him. Because if you work toward getting to know him, you'll know that whenever he's near, then the presence of healing is present. Whenever, wherever Jesus is. So much so that I tear the roof off a house to get to it. <laughs> if you really want to be saved, if you really want to be healed, you'll do whatever is necessary to get to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because you know that there's something about Him that's going to save me. Not like the guy that brought, you remember the guy that brought his son to Jesus? Mm -hmm. He said, if you can. He looked, what do you mean if I can? <laughs> All things are possible to him who believes. Mm -hmm. And he believed. He had faith, but he had unbelief mixed in. He had to work that part out of his life. And so getting to know Jesus, you got to know him absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. you got to take action to know the power of his resurrection. I wrote down as a note to myself, taking this action means by knowing the exceeding power of standing up again as a new man after being a fallen man. So you can't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and have Him renew you and act like He used to. You can't do new things in old way. It just don't work. If you're trying to do new things in old way, guess what? You never change. You never accepted what Jesus has done for you. Because if you die like He died, to attain the resurrection of the dead, when I come back, I'm a new creation. Amen. All things are new. So now I have a whole brand new life to live. Now when I couldn't reach the goal before, I can reach the goal now. Because I got everything I need to go after that goal. That makes sense to me. But there's a lot of people that have been in church for years, still doing, trying to do new things in all ways, still trying to put old Put new wine in the old wine skin. You wonder why everything is getting all messy. Mm -hmm. So in order to understand or to know this, the power of his resurrection, you have to then realize that I was once an old man, but now I'm a new man. And so the stuff that I used to do, I don't need to do anymore. Because it ain't helping me toward my goal. Mm -hmm. It's stopping me, if anything. It makes sense to me. You got to take on the actions to know the fellowship of his suffering by by experiencing by knowing the experience of his suffering through every hardship and misfortune that you go through, whether whether it's, 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 it's somebody talking about you, whether it's somebody putting you down because of Christ Jesus, whether it's somebody that came and killed you because of their the hatred that's in their heart. Mm -hmm. And then you have people that, survivors that's beyond that, are bringing hope back into the community. Hey, I don't know, I, I had not really followed what, what recently happened down in Southern and here, but I, I do know that that community is doing whatever they can through Christ Jesus to bring 
hope back. Amen. Amen. But the world is talking about, man, I don't know, we might need to get some, 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 some gate guards and some, 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 some iron smelling dogs, you know, some ferris smelling dogs and, and, and all this stuff. And all I'm seeing, listening to as I'm hearing this, is that that's, a, that's the ingredients. This isn't part of the sermon, this is just a thought that came to my mind. This, that's an ingredient for one world to live. Yes, sir. Look, you got all this crazy stuff going on. We just had the one simple place for everybody to go and worship God. And we'll put security around there. We'll make sure that you're safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so they, so they, they begin to use this terrorist, this terrorism to create fear in the people. And the people end up falling for that trip. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not, but if the goal is for me not to go through the suffering, that'd be a good place to go. But if the goal is for me to, to be fellowship in Christ's suffering, then no, I'm, I'm going to do whatever the Holy Spirit leads and guides me to do to not only take care of my surroundings, but to take care of the people that, that, that come to this place. Because you can't shut the doors of that church after all that. Yes, right. There's too many hurting people out there. Right. You, you, that makes sense to me. Yes. So this framework of attaining means that if any means I might attain Christ, I'm setting the foundation for you of understanding there. Because as a Christian, this has to be a goal we all have to strive for. It has to be a goal for every Christian to strive for. Why? Because without Christ, we will be unable to ever move toward any goal. Mm -hmm. If I don't have Christ, I can't go any further. If I don't have the knowledge of Christ, I can't go any further. If I don't understand the power of His resurrection, I can't go any further. If I don't have, if I'm not willing to go into the fellowship of His suffering, I can't go any further. I, that has to be a goal in my life. That has to be a goal in my life. Otherwise, I'll, I'll stay where I am and I'll be stifled in life because of my ignorance. Because I don't have the knowledge. I'll end up being stagnated by life because of my weakness. Because now the, the, the old man takes over my life. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not willing to, to, to uh, understand the power of the resurrection. I, if, if, if I don't have Christ as a goal that I strive toward, then I'm stonewalled throughout my life with my self-pity. Mm. Wow. Everything is happening to me. Nobody likes me with my mom. Keep me diving too. It's going to be a rough road to hold. Mm -hmm. Like I said, just because you establish a goal doesn't make the distance shorter, nor does it make it easier, but it does ensure that you will get to that destination. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, anything can be the destination. Even failure. Mm -hmm. Even failure. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to attain to the things of Christ. Because whatever we have gained, if by any means, we need to lose it to attain better. So, so when, as I'm beginning to think about the actions that I need to take in order to meet that need, I'm like, wait a minute. I need to study the Bible a little bit more. If I'm going if I'm to really get to know Jesus. I'm going to have to start digging into my life and finding out what's causing me to be a weak man versus a strong man in Christ. And get that thing out of my way. I'm going to have to start trying to figure out here, you know, why is it that I'm always being, being challenged by life? I'm, I'm, I'm a strong believer that, you know, the closer you get to the top of the mountain, the tougher the climb is going to be. Because you got everything pulling against you. you got all kinds of gravity. you got all kinds of stuff trying to pull you back the closer you get to the top of the mountain. It gets rougher. It's real easy down there at the bottom of the mountain because you ain't put no forth no effort. When you get closer to the top, so the closer you get to your destination or, or reaching your goal, the devil will I can do whatever I can to pull them back down off this mountain. I cannot let that king or that queen get on top of that mountain. Because once they get up there, it's over with for me. That makes sense to me. So you got to know what your goal is. you got to know what you're striving to. For. You know, last week I, when, I, when I brought up this thought about to obtain, some of us said obtain. That's what I said. You know, attain, obtain. Well, I want to talk about that. Because Paul uses that word, uh, what do you call it, interchangeably. Mm -hmm. But he's using it in a, in a particular context. And so I want to note to myself, to attain or not to obtain the goal, that is the question. 
And so when I look at, at verse 12, I see there, uh, 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 chapter 3, I see there it says, Not though as I had already obtained. You saw earlier in verse 11 it says, If by any means I may obtain. And in 12 Paul says, Not though I had already obtained. I'm looking at this like, Paul, what are you talking about? You're talking about obtaining? Are you saying that you didn't obtain? The NIV puts it this way. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal. This obtained in verse 11 is a kataneo. Kataneo. Meaning to come to a place over against. And so the use of the same word in verse 12, 12a is labano. It's a total different use. The first one is to come to a place over against. The other is to take for oneself. So he did he couldn't take for himself the resurrection of the dead. He had to come to a place of the resurrection of the dead. But once he came to that place, he had to take a hold of it. He had to make it him, part of his. But it's not to a point where he's perfect. He's got possession of it. Now. Meaning now I can use it to do something. If he never comes to the place to take it, mm -hmm. he not, doesn't have anything to walk away with. Mm -hmm. If he never come to the race, you can't get the prize. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. You can sit at the house all day long and talk about, man, one of these days I'm going to go down to the Cook River and run that bridge. <laughs> but if you never go down to where the bridge is, <laughs> you never can get in the race. I don't care how much you talk. Have you ever heard people talk about what they're going to do? Mm -hmm. That's not fitting to it. I'm fitting to do this. I'm fitting to do that. Someday I'm going to that. that uh, my wife talked about you know, those, those people. I'm like, Guana people. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. To call you. Either you're going to go do it or you're not going to do it. If it's not part of your goal, guess what? You won't do it. I don't care how much you talk. About. If it, you know, talking loud and saying nothing type of thing. So prophetic, prophetically, I wrote down to myself. When Paul said in verse 11, what he said in verse 11, he said, In knowing what he knows of Christ, mm -hmm. that knowledge has brought him to a certain place in life. To a desired place of experiencing the resurrection of the dead. What he knows about Christ had brought him to that point. And so he came there willingly to attain to the resurrection of the dead. Because if he never came to that, I don't care if he got knocked off his high horse. All he would do is get back on and go still do what he was supposed to do. But he wanted to understand the resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so everything that he got before that, he cut it off. So that now he can attain this. And so when you look at this, the fact that he obtained on this Labano to take uh, the take from oneself, it means there to, to take with hand or to lay a hold on the to take in order to carry away, to, to take to make your make it your own self. This this thought, this understanding that he gained out of it. So in other words, he says, in coming, in coming to the place of resurrection of the dead, I can't act like I got full possession of it. Right. I can't I can't act like I got everything I need for life, but I don't want to go any further and get any more. He said you can't do that. There's a lot of people who 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 called on Jesus. He answered their prayer, got them out of trouble, and then they don't come back from them. They turn and they walk away from them. Mm -hmm. That's why if you read some of the instances that of Jesus healing, he always tells them, you, you've been you're, by your faith you've been healed, but don't go sin anymore. Sin no more because what, what happens is they get that, that thing off them, whatever that thing may be. They think, okay, I got everything I need to live the rest of my life really good. Yes. Only to go back to do what they did before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they think they got everything. There's a lot of people that come in, in, in to, to church and they uh, when you look at what, what, what Jesus laid out as a, the, the, the sword and the seed and all those things. They hear the word, but they they get snatched away. They hear the word. They get happy for a minute and trouble comes. They end up losing their faith. They hear the word and, and, and 
see, mm -hmm. you know, the weeds come in and choke it out. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. You come to a point that you thought you had everything that you needed and you just stop. He said, no, that's that's not that's not the goal. Mm -hmm. That's just a point in life. That's just a place in life. We all have to come to that certain place in life where we sit down and look at it and say, you know something? There's more to life. There's more to my life as a Christian than this. But for whatever reason, I stopped. And I haven't gone any further. I don't care whether you've just started out or you've been here for 20 years. There's always more. There's always more. But if the goal was only to get here, then you got as far as you want to go. Paul said, no, nah, that's not far enough for me. You, you remember, you remember uh, in John 20 and 38, uh, 20 verses 3 through 8, when, G, uh, when Paul and, or rather, when Peter and John went to the tomb? Turn with me right quick. I want to show you something. I, I, I saw something there that, that really amazed me. I'm going to read it for you right quick. John chapter 20, verses 3 through 8. He says, well, I'll start at the verse 1. This is this is the account of when Mary Magdalene had went to the to the tomb when it was dark and saw the stone moved away and she ran back to tell Peter and them who were hiding out in the in the upper room what had happened. And so when he when she in verse 2 it says, then she runs and comes to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them, they have taken away the taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. And we know not where they have laid him. Verse 3. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they they ran both together. Remember that. They ran both together. And the other disciple did outrun Peter. And came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down, talking about the other disciple, and looking in, saw the linen cloth laying, yet went he not in. Uh -huh. So he came to the he came to the tomb, he looked in, saw the, the linen, but he didn't go in. Mm -hmm. He stood outside. Verse 6. Then comes Simon Peter. Peter finally catches up. And he went, but he went into the sepulchre and see the linen cloth lie, and the napkin that was about the head, about his head, not laying with the a linen cloth were wrapped together in its place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple who came first to the sepulchre and he saw and believed. So Peter, he finally shows up. <laughs> he just walks on in. He looks around. He sees all this stuff. And then the other disciple, he's like, okay, let me go see what's going on in here. He looks around and he believes. Later on, in reading the verse 9, Peter went fishing. He gave up. Because Peter's goal was just to the tomb. The other disciple's goal was to the place of resurrection. He came to the place of resurrection. When he got there, he took. <laughs> he took what he needed from that information, and that made him believe. Yes. That's what I'm talking about here. See, there are some people that just come to a certain place and they think they got everything and they say, okay, this is good enough. I don't need to go any further. Mm -hmm. And they go back to what they were doing before. Because they think there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Because Peter, he knew Jesus, but he didn't know the scripture. He didn't understand the connection. He's like, okay, this is as far as it goes. He's dead. Somebody came and stole him. Not realizing that he was supposed to, he was talking about rising from the dead. But the, the other disciple, he took it a step further. He took it a step further. See, both of them were running, but not with the same expectation. Yeah, both of them, one, One's expectation was seeing a dead body. Peter ran just to see the dead body. That's his expectation. Mm -hmm. The other of seeing an empty tomb. That's why he outranked Peter. Because he wanted to be the first to say, Yep, it's empty. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I told you it's gonna be empty. So you can imagine when they both run it. And, and the other brother, I mean, he's, he's stroking, he's doing his hip bit. <laughs> you know, he, he looks like he's standing in the plate, but he's gone. Peter's like, you know, I don't know. I know he's dead. I don't ain't nobody ever come alive again. I don't know, I don't know why you run, so you need to slow down, man, you know. So both were running, but not with the same expectation. Both arrived at the, the tomb to fulfill the expectation, but they both had different experiences mm -hmm. there at the tomb. Right. Right. The one that ran there with expectation of seeing a dead body, he walked in and just looked around. He was running somewhere. Hmm. What is that? Oh, I see all this linen, but I don't see the dead body. Where's the dead body at? He was looking for the dead body. That's the only reason why he walked in. Mm -hmm. The other guy knew there wasn't nobody in there. So, oh, I just see Glenn. Okay, ain't nobody in there. He gone. He, he done rolled. He left. <laughs> I don't need to go in there. The curiosity got the cat. So he said, let me see what this looks like. Let me see what this power looks like. You know what I'm telling you? Let me see what this power looks like. The power of the resurrection. What does it look like? Mm -hmm. Looks like an empty tomb. Ain't nobody here. He turns and walks. Both came to a conclusion, but not the same conclusion. One left with more doubt. <laughs> yeah, Peter left with more doubt. I can't figure this thing out. Because he never had a goal of seeing Jesus resurrect. Mm -hmm. So he can't figure it out. The opportunity presents itself for him to learn something, to go to the next level of success, but he didn't take it. He went back to what he was doing before. The other one, the other brother, yeah, I, I should have put the other left, I should have put the other brother. The other brother left with more faith. He's like, Jesus rose. Mm -hmm. Jesus rose. Jesus rose. And so what happened then is that there was an attainment paradigm shift. I wrote down a definition of the uh, Paradigm shift is it's an important change that happens when the usual way of thinking about or doing something is replaced by a new and different way. Mm -hmm. What this attainment, the fact that I'm going to the plate, a certain place, once I got to that place, I'm not going to let that place define to, for me the destination. So what I need to do now is I need to make a shift mm -hmm. because now this place becomes the beginning place of my future. This place becomes the beginning place of going further. When I came to this point, once I come to this res revelation of the resurrection, when I come to this revelation of who Christ is, when I come to this revelation of what the power of the resurrection is, when I come to this place of the fellowship uh, uh, of, of his suffering, when I come to this place and I have this revelation about this, it doesn't mean that I stay here. It means now that I'm at a place where I can go further. Amen. Because I had to come to this place of revelation. If I never come to this place of revelation, I ain't got nothing to take me to the next level. Exactly. Yeah. I needed something to take me to the next level. No matter where you are in that run. No, no matter where I was on that two and a half miles going across that bridge, at some point I had to say, I got to kick it in. The second wind has got to kick in sooner or later. And once it kicked in, I'm like, okay, I got enough to make it. Oh, I'm going to slow down. I just make that shift. That paradigm shift is a change in strategy. Mm -hmm. You can't hold on to the same strategy. I can't have the same strategy of coming to Christ as I do going to Christ. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Amen. Amen. It's a different strategy. Mm -hmm. Because I came to Christ one way, but I keep going to where he's going, where he's at. To call heaven. Another way. Because otherwise, when I came here, I'm like, See nothing change. So I end up going back to where I used to go. That makes sense to me. Amen. So Paul says you you come further than you've ever been before. Amen. When you come to this point of attainment, it's because you come further than you've ever been. Mm -hmm. I, I, I laid that. 
that, that thought, that revelation on the fact that the goal is to come to a certain point in life, which is further than you've ever been before, in order for your faith to encounter Christ. At some point, I had to go just a little bit further to get to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Once I did that, then I was able to make the shift. So then the goal then becomes not acting as if I've come as far as I could possibly go or obtain all that I'm looking for all at once. Mm -hmm. What it means then is that I come to a certain point in life, like I said, it is the beginning point of going further. So when I got this far, it's for me to get the stuff that I need to go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. I can take this and I can go further. When I first came here, I didn't have a Bible. All I had was just this. Mm -hmm. Now I got a Bible to read. And now I got a Bible that don't have any references in it. I got to buy me another Bible to get some references in it. And now I'm, I'm, I'm taking it on my laptop. I'm putting some more stuff on it. And so the further I go, the more I get. Because I need this to go even further. So now I come to church and I'm greeting everybody at the door. Welcome to, to, to the church. Make, have a seat. Enjoy yourself. We'll, we'll, we'll watch your, you know, your car outside. We'll make, if you need anything, just ask. So now the door greeted. And now I'm Amen. preach. Amen. Because I come to a certain point Amen. to get what I need so that I can go further. Yeah. And I take a, I take some things, but I don't take what I had before right. with me. Me and my wife were talking the other day and she said, you know, you you're not like you used to be. You used to be arrogant. You used to <laughs> you, you, need, you need a little help, you know, some anger management help. You know? I'm sitting there listening to it, like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm, I was a first class, you know, nothing. She's like, well, maybe that's what you said. And, and, and so all of a sudden, I started drifting back. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> maybe you were like that before. All oh, she's just saying is, you know, you're different than the way you used to be. Which that that got to be proof that I've come a, a lot further than I've been ever been before. That's proof. And so I accept that. I'm like, okay, you're not telling me like that, do <laughs> Because ultimately, the goal. Of coming to a place to attain Christ is not our goal. It's Jesus' goal. It's his goal for us to come to that place. Because once he comes, we come to that place, that encounter that we have with Christ, really he's apprehending us at that time. He's taken us at that time and bringing us to him at that time. But we had to come ourselves. He's not going to drag us to this place. He's going to call you. Come to me, all those that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come on, I'll, I'll help you out. Learn of me. And if you're willing to come close enough, you're like, I got you. <laughs> I ain't going to let you go. Because whatever is in my hand, I, can, I don't lose it. I don't lose it. That's why to obtain or not to obtain the goal. I want to obtain the goal. Mm -hmm. I want to get all I can get while I'm here because where I'm going, I'm going to need what I got here. Amen. And I'm only going to get whatever my mind is set on getting, mm -hmm. whatever that goal is. So I can't tell you what your goal is. Right. The Holy Spirit tells you that, but I can tell you that yes. you need Christ. Come yes. on, my yes. Once you get it, I know it Yes, yes. And you need to let go of the stuff that's behind. Mm -hmm. That's the only way it's gonna work, y'all. Mm -hmm. That's the only way it's gonna work. Yes, that's right. So 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 the question then is, uh, and yeah, it could be a question. <laughs> it could be a statement too. You have to be willing to release so that you can reach high. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to re to release so that you can reach high? Mm -hmm. That's the question. That's the question I think all of us need to, to attend to. Because when you read uh, Philippians 3.13, it goes a little bit further. Anybody get anything out of this? Amen. Because it says that, brother, 
I count not myself to have apprehended, but there's one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth uh, to those things that are before. Let me deal with that piece. He says, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but there's one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. I wrote down here, I to myself, I said, uh, we have to release whatever it is that is holding us back and reach for Christ. Mm -hmm. We have to release Whatever it is that is holding us back and with Christ. Because in verse 12 it says, Not as though I have already obtained, either have already uh, were already perfected, but I follow, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend for which that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Mm -hmm. This word apprehend here is a labano. I've gotten a hold of this thing. With this, but there's something sometimes that holds us back from apprehending Christ or being or, or to being apprehended by Christ. That's why when we do reach for Christ, when we finally get to that point where we're before Christ and we want to be apprehended by Him, we have to do it in a more purposeful way. Mm -hmm. In other words, we got to put forth effort. Amen. we got to do it in a more profound way. We just can't do it just to show off that people think that I'm a Christian because i got a big Bible and I, and I talk Christian ease every now and then. Every now and then I say A-Z-E-I-E. You, you know, talking in tongues, that's at or Eddie. You, you know what I'm saying. You, you know, we, 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 we do things to, to, to fool people. And it's okay to fool people, but that doesn't get us closer to our goal. Mm -hmm. We got to give up those things and do it in a profound, a deeper way. We got to do it in a more permanent way. So whatever it is that I'm doing that, that's going to get me closer to Christ, I'm doing it because I want it to stick. Mm -hmm. And so if I got to keep reading this verse over and 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 over to become a, a certain part of me, I'm doing that. Because that one verse, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. That's got me over a lot of humps. And, and so whatever that, that thing is, but he says this one thing that we should all do is to forget the insignificant things which are behind us. Mm -hmm. Forget the insignificant things that are behind us. And reach toward the significant things that are before us. Right. So, what is this this act of releasing uh, to uh, uh, to reach? You got to release to reach. Think maybe you got to release. Got to release to reach. To reach. You got to release. Got to release to reach. To reach. And this is a simultaneous action. I got to release. To reach. To reach. And this action is really in the sense, it's, it's, a, it's a dual action in the sense of direction and source. Amen. So when I release, or by forgetting, Paul said we must forget Amen. those things that are in our past. What I'm doing is I'm getting away Getting away means to don't forget to forget what is behind you. Mm. In forgetting, don't forget to forget mm. what's behind us. Yeah. Wow. Don't forget don't to forget, forget what is behind you. Mm -hmm. He said, there's one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Don't forget to forget those things that are behind you. In other words, allow yourself to fail to remember those insignificant things that are behind you. 
allow yourself to fail to recognize with yourself with those insignificant things that are behind you. Allow yourself to fail to reconnect with those insignificant things behind you. Don't forget to forget those things behind you. So don't even try to remember that stuff. Amen. It's insignificant. It doesn't mean anything. It, uh, that word I think they use uh, associated with it is an eclectic thing it is. It's like saying can't. Instead of saying cannot, see the, the not partial is so insignificant, you just say can't. You just blend it all together. And so this forgetting to forget insignificant things, I, I don't even want to think about this. It don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. So I'm going to fail to remember. You remember back when you used it? I don't remember that. Amen, amen. <laughs> and you know, we were just, you, you, you remember you pray right and Fuki and them went, I, I just don't remember that. Amen. Oh, you don't remember that. No, I don't. <laughs> it just failed. I failed to remember that. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's insignificant. It doesn't have nothing to do with where I'm at right now. Right. Right. Exactly. It's so insignificant, it couldn't stop me from getting where I am. If it was significant enough to stop me, then I would, I would remember it because I'm still in it. But because I'm not in it no longer, it don't mean nothing. Exactly. So my philosophy, my paradigm shift, my new strategy that now that I have attained Christ mm -hmm. is that I'm not going. I'm not going to remember that. I'm going to fail to remember that stuff. I'm going to forget to forget. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on now. So it won't come back to my mind anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to stay back, then you go right ahead. That's you. <laughs> but I'm moving on. That makes sense to me. Amen. So we have to. We have to. To release by forgetting. Exactly. And then we have to reach by reaching forth. Mm -hmm. Meaning, getting a hand means to always reach towards that which is in front of you. In other words, there's nothing behind you that you have to reach to pull to you. Right, right. You pass that. It's insignificant. Mm -hmm. The significant things are before you. When I came to the place of resurrection, Jesus was standing before me. He wasn't at the tomb. Amen. 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 He went to the mount. He was waiting for me to go to the place he told us to meet him at. That's right. He was already there. All I had to do was go there. Right. But because I was in the valley of doubt, I couldn't go to the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get there. And so, because I'm looking, I, I'm looking back. I remember when me and Jesus used to sit down on the dock of the bay. <laughs> I remember when me and, the, me and the boys used to sit back, you know, chillax and talk about, you know, who's going to be the greatest. The greatest will die. He's gone. <laughs> and all he's doing is sitting there looking at doubt. Where they went, where they will never get to. Mm -hmm. Jesus standing behind Peter. Peter. That's right. Turn around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> here I am. Yeah. That's what he's doing to some of us. Turn around. I'm over here. I'm over here. He got eyes on me. He got eyes on me. I, you know, when you stand in, in, in military, you stand at attention. Your eyes got to be front. Right. You can't be doing all this here, Peter. You're in attention. You just call it attention to yourself and start doing this. Yeah, right. so everybody's eyes is straight from you. And that drill so I can see you. You'll get all in your face. We look, look at me in my eyes. So you got to reach. And so this direction that you're going in, unlike the, the release of the past where, where, where the direction was going back in the past, here you got to go forward. Mm -hmm. And you got to go forward in a certain way. You can't go like this. You got to extend yourself. Right. You got to reach out. You got to extend yourself almost to the point of falling down. You got to extend yourself all the way out to get there. Because when I extend myself fully forward, there's no way I can ever fall back. Come on now. Amen. Amen. 
because I'm, I'm, I'm this way. I can't fall back. Because my momentum is going forward. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm poised to go forward. Thank you, Mr. One of the things that, that I was thinking about, about this release, is that when you draw back, the, I've used this illustration before, but the Holy Spirit gave me another understanding. When I draw back that arrow, mm -hmm. you draw back the bow. Come on now. When I draw back the bow, the power of the bow mm -hmm. and the power of my arm is at the back point of the arrow. The arrow will stay there as long as I'm holding right. back. But once I release it, the arrow, the power of the bow and the power of my arm releases the arrow to go forward. Mm -hmm. And it extends itself. Mm -hmm. It extends my power and it extends the power of the bow forward toward right. the mark. Right. But as long as I hold it back, it ain't going nowhere. Exactly. And if I don't pull it back far enough, it's only going to just fall out. I want this thing to go. <laughs> I want this thing to go. So I'm going to extend myself as far as I possibly can. So when I release this thing, it goes right toward us. Amen. Amen. And so when we, when we do that, we send it in the direction that we want to go in. And the direction that we want to extend ourselves to is the promises of God. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. I want, I, want to, I want to get to the promises of God. Mm -hmm. Because he is the source. I'm extending myself toward the source, which is Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm extending out this way for him. Not falling back. It makes sense to me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I want, I, want to, I want to take hold of the hope of glory in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Which is our access to the kingdom. I want to, I want to receive the reward of following Christ. Which is the crown that we, that we have. And so I want, I want to extend myself so I can get my crown. I can't, do, I can't get no crown doing this here bit. I need to get my crown. I'm reaching out for my crown. I, I, I want to embrace... The grace of Christ. Mm -hmm. Which is our strength. Because that's where our strength comes from. And so that's, that's why Paul is saying that you, you, you've got to come to this point that I haven't apprehended it, but there's one thing that I'm doing. I'm forgetting the stuff behind me mm -hmm. and I'm reaching toward the, the stuff before me mm -hmm. because that's where I need to go. That's right. That's why I need to go. That's, that's right. why I'm going to close with this. That's why. I need to get to what he says in 14. I press toward the mark. Press. I press toward press. the mark. Mm -hmm. press. press. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. See, the high or significant goal is never beyond the reach of the one who is willing to press toward. Mm -hmm. It's never higher and beyond the reach of the one that is willing to press toward. Mm -hmm. Because I come to a certain point in my life where I have attained the resurrection of the dead. Which means that there's more for me. Because now I have eternal life. And so as I'm pressing on toward this, that pressing part is a, the, the, the sanctification. It's a, it's a process that I go through. I'm willing to press through this process because I'm moving toward this goal. I have a goal to reach the high calling. Amen. See, each and every one of us have a high calling. Right. I, I, I don't know what it is for you. I can't tell you what it is because I might be talking lower. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, there's, there's these planes. This is my last illustration. I'm going to close. There's these planes that, that fly to certain destinations. They have a goal to go to a certain destination. Mm -hmm. The planes that fly from city to city, say, in, in the state, small planes. They don't need to be very big planes because they don't have to go as high. And so they'll fly from one city to the next. Then you have the larger planes. These planes fly from state to state. Mm -hmm. They don't fly at the altitude of the city to city planes. They fly at a higher altitude. Mm -hmm. Because they're going a little bit further. Then you have the intercontinental flights. Mm -hmm. They fly even higher. Mm -hmm. Because they got to get to a certain altitude in order for that, that slipstream and all that stuff to carry them across to a nation. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, really? I can't tell you what your high calling is. Because I might only see as much as city to city. 
Come on, but you're man. going from nation to nation. Come on, and man. if I get you focused on city to city, you'll be in the, in the uh, continental airplane trying to fly like a city oh, to city my plane. God. My and you, you see what I'm saying? And you will never get up to the speed you never need to be at because that that the one that goes higher, it takes him longer to get to his speed. It takes him longer to get to his altitude. Amen. And so if he tries to fly city to city, he'll never get. That's he, right. he can't go up. By the time he get up, he got to come down. That's right. right. Come on now. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's why Paul says, I press. press. Right. Each individual press. Come on now. Toward the mark of the high call. Uh -huh. That's in Christ Jesus. Right. right. You've got to press. Yes. You've got to press. You can't. Yes. And, and you can't sit there and say, well, I, you know, I'm just a little plain. Well, you're a little jet. <laughs> You have the capability of flying at that that altitude Come on now. That's and right. that distance. Yes, amen. If that's that, if that's what God has for you, mm -hmm. hmm. but now you are beginning to realize that the goal that we're striving for is that upward call, mm -hmm. that, that that higher calling, that elevated call. Each and every one of us has that. That's right. And this this calling it requires that each one of us shift mm -hmm. to a pain. Yes. Well, however far you've gotten thus far, this is the, this is only your beginning point of going further. Mm -hmm. and so now you have to shift. You have to change that strategy. You got to get paradigm shift mm -hmm. because once you do that, Christ has said, "Okay, I'm, I've just been waiting for you to get here. I've been waiting. I, I've been calling you, but you ain't been answering." I've been calling you higher, but you keep flying from city to city at the lower altitude. Come on up here. You got the Amen. capability. Amen. I put that in you. I know it's in you. And what's going to make that shift is that we have to understand that we have to mature. So as we mature, we begin to release those growth limiting belief systems. Amen. As I begin to grow, I'm, I'm letting that stuff go. As I'm growing, I'm letting that stuff go. Trying to make rhyming all the time. You know <laughs> so we gotta, we gotta be, we have to be willing to expose our inner self to God. Mm -hmm. And the way you do that is when you get into the Word, and the Word begins to shine the light on this hidden stuff that's within you. Amen. You gotta allow it to, to, to do what it does. To get rid of that stuff. Because as long as you hold on to this, this hidden stuff, whatever that may be, you're not going nowhere. You're going to be held in your past. you you got to be willing to make the shift to get a better grip on the truth of God. you got to be willing to do that. So in other words, you got to release any past doctrines that told you otherwise than what God is telling you right now. It may have been true back then, but I, was, you know, I didn't know any better. But I know a whole lot more now. Amen. See, the more you get into it, it doesn't make the destination any shorter and make right. the run any easier, right. but it makes it more possible to get there when you set your goal to go higher. Amen. And as I've set my goal to go higher, then things are going to start presenting themselves so that's going to lead me to go higher. And when I got these jet engines on, the, on my wings and nobody else do, we, we rev this thing up. Rev it. Rev it. <laughs> you gone. They wonder where you going. I ain't seen you in weeks. Where you been? Oh, I just got back back from Costa Rica. What you doing over in Costa Rica? I don't, you know, God just took me over there and I just started ministering to people. Now, how do you get to Costa Rica? You can get on Facebook. You can get on a plane. You can get on talking to what however it happens, it happens. But in order for it to happen, that's got to be one of your goals. I want to I want to reach somebody's life outside of who I am. Or my little circle of concern. So this is this is my prayer. And whatever the case may be, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you will have what you need to press on. You will have whatever you need to press on. Father, I humbly submit this prayer to you on behalf of all that are present in here. That according to the richness of your, your glory, that you may grant unto these your children strength with power through your spirit. That helps them achieve the things that you have called them to achieve. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that in doing so, they become rooted and grounded in love. Yes. Having the strength to comprehend as well as apprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the height and the depth, which is the fullness of your love. 
To know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge so that they may be filled with all the fullness of you. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than we ever ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.